God, I love seeing my name on a poster. All writers are children. 50% are drunks, and up till very recently, writers in Hollywood were gag men. Most of them still are gag men, but we call them writers. But uh, they're still the farmers in this business. They grow the grain, but they're not in at the feast. What would they have used instead of an old mill? I need it tonight. Yeah, Marty, you were saying? I can't write it. Why? I lost my typewriter. Get Mr. White a typewriter. For 15 years, I've been trying to teach you how to write a lead. Do I have to do everything myself? Get the story, write the story? Listen, saphead, I could blow a better story out of my, out of my nose than you can write. <laughs> Damn, Phyllis Hopkins, Philadelphia's where you belong, making up jingles for Burma shade. Oh, really? Well, now who? Orson Welles was only 26 when he made Citizen Kane. I'm already 30. Eat an apple every day, get to bed by three. Take good care of yourself, you belong to me. I got to get up on that light. You're in the presence of an artist, a creator. If I get up in that light with my own movie, I could be everywhere. So you want to make a movie, right? I could be everywhere all at once. I took this meeting out of respect because I wanted to say no to your face. Oh, you're not going to make the movie. Of course I'm going to make the picture. Is there a script? You know, I'd, I'd want to let the uh, movie exist rather rather than be artificially plot-driven. Something like Renoir, Tarkovsky. I just don't want to ruin it by making it a Hollywood thing, you know? Can we talk about something other than Hollywood for a change? Yeah. Yes. We're educated yeah, yeah. people. Sure. Sure. Why, why can't there be a movie simply about, about flowers? I like that. How about Batman and Robin? Ping! I'm saying it, it's like I don't want to cram in sex or uh, guns or car chases, you know, I, I, or characters learning profound life lessons or growing or coming to like each other or overcoming obstacles to succeed in the end. Brother, don't nobody want to see no shit like that. Writing is a journey into the unknown. All I want to do is tell stories, the things that I find interesting. Be realistic. You're not a movie star. You're not an actor. You're not Billy D. Williams. Oh, you don't have to be modest with me. I don't believe in modesty. I believe in pride. I believe in the pride of making good films. Well, why don't you just write it yourself? To know that one does not know is the gift of a superior spirit. Savoir que l'on ne sait pas, c'est de l'esprit supérieur. Not to know and to think that one does know is a mistake. Ne pas savoir et croire que l'on sait, c'est une faute. To know that this is a mistake keeps one from making it. Savoir que c'est une faute empêche qu'il tombe. change the course of the future. It can invent the future by making ideas concrete. Yes, tell me, Professor. So. 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 Not tell. It starts with the word. So who gonna write that word, Rudy? To begin, how to start. Okay, so I need to establish the themes. An image is not strong because it is brutal or fantastic, but because the association of ideas is distant and true. What is great is not the image, but the emotion that it provokes.
I finished my script. The title of the film? Bride of the Atom. What's the story? Stories only exist in stories. Oh, my. This is very interesting. Screenwriting seminars are bullshit. Is that right? And then Dr. Vornoff falls into the pit and his own octopus attacks and eats him. The end. We open on State Road 29. A battered white van speeds along, making a sharp skidding right into the Fakahachi Strand State Preserve. The driver of the van is a skinny man with no front teeth. This is John LaRoche. I need a break. I need a typewriter. That's not a piano, it's a typewriter. One key at a time. He saw reality too clearly. Faulty denial mechanism. Failed to block out the terrible truths of existence. In the end, his inability to push away the awful facts of being in the world rendered his life meaningless. Or as one great Hollywood producer said, too much reality is not what the people want. Just about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What are you talking about? An open mind. Well, Mr. Weiss, look no further. I'm your man. I'm a director, writer, actor, and producer. Ah, oh, come on. Nobody does all that. Oh, yes, they do. Two people. Orson Welles and me. So you think this qualifies you to make my movie? Yes. And I'm good. Now, what is the one thing, if you put it in a movie, it'll be successful? Tits. Gene Harlow, Ann Sheridan, Irene Dunn, Claudette Colbert, Rita Hayward, Betty Grable, and the lovely Miss Jane Russell. No. No, I ain't doing no porn. You porn motherfuckers always coming down. Woman, I'm making a motion picture, and I want you to be in it. Well, what's it about? Pain, nobility, the human condition. Truth. <laughs> Narrative art, as you well know, is dead. We are in a period of mourning. Mine is not a tale, it is a parable. The meaning of this parable is precisely the relationship of an author to the form he creates. I am a form, the knowledge of which is illusion. The artist's job is not to succumb to despair, but to find an antidote for the emptiness of existence. We came here to create something human, something <laughs> eternal. A man in love with a woman from a different era. I see a photograph. I see a film. I think I would make films even if I was the last free man. Maybe I could make films because I need to. I like it, I feel like it, so I do it. I, I either kill myself or I do it. I feel much more comfortable writing than talking like this. I can make some notes and get them to you tomorrow. How do I do a film called The Old Mill when I don't have an old mill? Well, first you gotta change the title. Hey, The Dueling Mammy. I've got it. No. The Dancing Cavalier. Oh, Mr. Winwell. I, I had a nice idea for a movie for you. A group of people attend a very formal dinner party, and at the end of dinner, when they try to leave the room, they can't. They just can't seem to exit the door. When they're forced to stay together, the veneer of civilization quickly fades away, and what you're left with is who they really are animals. I don't understand what's holding them in the room. It's my masterpiece. Greatest drama since the Tennessee William. Sometimes it's interesting to see just how bad bad writing can be. There are times in this life when you can't wonder whether it's the right or the wrong thing to do. Not for guys like you and me, kid. 
You just gotta pack up and go. Only the daring should make films. And only the artistically incorrupt will earn and keep the people's trust. Exactly. Yeah, except it's gonna be in black and white. What's gonna be in black and white? The movie, it's in black and white. Now, life is in color, but black and white is more realistic. Color's worth a million dollars at the box office. Well, that's not important. What I'm trying to find out from Basil here is uh, how much color complicates our operation. Black and white, black and white, you motherfucker. I ought to have my fucking head examined talking me into black and white. Who the fuck makes black and white now, huh? I don't care if this picture's shot in black and white or sepia tone or we have to make the whole damn thing in animation. I mean, he, he thought it was a joke. He said, what's the matter with the color? What's the matter with the color? It looks, it looks black and white. <laughs> I said it is black and what? <laughs> Tell me your movie, Nick. There I found him. There I smelt him out. Go to. They are not men of their words. Betwixt mine eye they and told heart, me I was a league is took. And each doth good Does turns I? now into the other. I am. When not that mine me. eye is famished for a look. Or hard in love with size himself doth smother. With my love's picture, then my eye doth feast, and to the painted banquet bids my heart. You're beating the audience over the head, John. People don't go to see pictures to be lectured to. You're speaking in riddles. No. I'm speaking in images. You know something, Pete? You're never gonna be a good screenwriter, and you know why? No, John. Why don't you tell me why? Because you let 85 million popcorn eaters pull you this way and that way. To write a movie, you must forget that anyone's ever going to see it. Well, you're going to make damn sure nobody ever sees this one. Have faith, Alice. Close your eyes. And enjoy. You. Imagining out there in the dark. Come up here and prove who you are. You say you're a genius in Berlin greatest filmmaker in the world. No. This is a film I want them to remember me by. Not bad, but you're trying to complicate it, Pete. Things are always good if they're left simple. We want this thing to be raw. Tell it like it is on the streets. Yeah, lots of pimps and whores and cussing and all that shit. I want this picture to be a document. I want to hold a mirror up to life. I want this to be a picture of dignity, a true canvas of the suffering of humanity. But with a little sex in it. With a little sex in it. In storytelling, uh, it's always best to um, you know, write what you know. Exactly what kind of material do you recommend? James Joyce, Dostoevsky? Psycho. Get them started by buying copies of Psycho. How many do you need? All of them. Every copy nationwide. Scar every bookshop, every library. And I mean everywhere. Psycho is going to be my next movie, and I don't want anyone to know the ending till they see it in the theatre. The few people that have changed history are not the sycophants or the Cardinal's retinue. They're the people who said no. Are you telling me no? Refusal has always been a crucial gesture, but to be effective, it has to be great. Absolute absurd. First shot of the picture. I'll go fuck yourself. I'll go fuck yourself. You cheated me, Fritz. That's not what is in that script. It is! It's absolute crap. People don't speak like that. Do I have any writers around here who understand the way people talk? Nobody wants to see a film about Adolf fucking Hitler! No, 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 no! You're missing the point. In the end, it's not about him. It's about the tramp. A little Jewish barber taking his place. Here's my outline, scene for scene. This entire script is flim-flam. You finished? No, I'm not finished. Does it? Everybody wants to take things away from me. You want to take my scene away? She wants to take my food? Where is its heart? Where is its reality? Where is the gravitas? You got another scene. I'll write you another scene. Thank you. It won't make a goddamn bit of difference. Yeah. Studio will cut them all out anyway, like they do everything else. Well, they won't cut my scenes out. No? What makes you so special? 
Because they know that if they touch my film, I'll kill them. You mean bang? And then I'll eat them. <laughs> you don't need me anymore, Eisenstein. Find your own way. Blacklist. I have a goddamn blacklist. No blacklist. The studio just doesn't want to know you. After everything you do for everybody, why would they do this to him? My mind. God dang. Listen, have you read my script? Uh, yes, I have. I don't you understand, Joe? I, 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 I want to do something new, some, some, something different. I think it's an interesting script. Uh-huh. How come you have two other writers on it? You've distorted the girl. By distorting the girl, you've distorted the story. We're back. Yeah, How? Look, kid, all I'm saying is, can't you do a simple story? Like a love story? The girl stands for health, vitality, love. You've made her a whore. I have failed. I am panicked. First, I have sold out. I am worthless. Last, I, uh, what the fuck am I doing here? I should leave here right now. I'll start over. I need to face this project head on. And, and God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Any idiot can write voiceover narration to explain the thoughts of a character. Hey, you can't talk that way about my movie. You cannot have a protagonist without desire. It doesn't make any sense. Any fucking sense. Giant spiders, giant grasshoppers. Who would believe such nonsense? <laughs> the old ones were much spookier. They had castles, full moons. They were mythic. They had a poetry to them. Yes. And you know what else? The women. The women prefer the traditional monsters. Oh, good. darling, you're such a poet. Let me suck your toe. The pure horror, it both repels and attracts them. Because in their collective unconsciousness, they have the agony of childbirth. The blood. The blood is horror. If you want to make out with a young lady, you take her to see Dracula. Cut to medium shot of an intense, mysterious, dark-haired woman. Right, she is an angel, literally. A story is a story until people believe it. And then that story is called the truth. This is where it all comes, comes together now, okay? Aliens and robots? Yes, sir. And then he turns back and looks at planet Earth. Sounds are coming from there, faintly far away. Music, voices, pop songs, advertising, revolutionary songs. He looks back at Earth and he says, in the end, I'm happy that I followed that star because it gave me the opportunity to know better the planet that I love so much. It's a fight of the individual against the circumstances. Fritz, that's wonderful for you and me, but you think the, the public is gonna understand that? The boy's going away, probably to be killed. So when the mother speaks, she doesn't speak. And what she's feeling, we'll leave for the audience to imagine. Always try to make the audience wonder what's going to happen. What happens? I don't know. I was just making pictures. Your characters must change. And the change must come from them. What is the essence of your story, Joe? It's about a man who gets a second chance. Sensational! Cosmo, remind me to give you a raise. The ORF. Yes? <laughs> give me a raise. And then this is our second chance. You know, hon, when you rewrite a script, it just gets better and better. Never mind. Never mind. Uh... Eddie, what kind of a movie is this? Well, it's about how people have two personalities. The side they show to the world, and then the secret person they hide inside. Don't worry for my script. It's uh, original, it's exciting, and it's moving. I just have one little problem with it. Uh oh, the ending. It ends with a simple declaration of love, you know. The end doesn't exist. So we just wait. Something will happen. It ends with a beginning. Amazing. The tale. Is as old as the Eden tree and new as the new cut tooth, for each man knows ere his lip thatch grows. He is master of art and truth. Oh my gosh. Orson Welles. 
Ladies and gentlemen, by way of introduction, this is a film about trickery and fraud, about lies. It's not a lie, it's a gift for fiction. Ah, Mr. Wells, is it all worth it? It is when it works. You know, the one film of mine where I had total control, Kane, the studio hated it, but they didn't get to touch a frame. Ed. Yes? Visions are worth fighting for. Why spend your life making someone else's dreams? We're about to embark on quite a journey. Thank you. Orson. We'll have a picture that'll entertain, enlighten, and maybe even move millions of people. I want the end not with a bang, but with a whimper. <laughs>